Hi there, I'm Lars from FX, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Slime BFX for Unity, both for built-in render pipeline, URP, and HDRP. They are all the same. Uh, slight differences because like the render pipelines vary from one to the other, obviously, but the usage should be the same mostly. So in this sense, uh, you can see we don't have any of the Unity promo images on the Unity asset store. That is because just Unity approved this asset super quickly and we didn't get the chance to upload those yet. So we are working on those right now. Uh, but let me just show you how everything needs to be installed and how everything is put together. So let's import SlimeBFX URP, open your URP project. It has to be 2023.2.19 because that's the version that we made it in, but we will be porting this to at least Unity 2022 because, you know, we like to have some level of retro compatibility, but like we don't like it's it's such a huge amount of work to be like supporting versions as as old as 2020. So yeah, we wanted to give this back a bit more updated, like up to date, and then give it support from there. But maybe 2022 would be a great idea to have. So keep an eye out for that. And yeah, so import slime effects for URP. You can see all the assets here. We've got a couple different uh, sound effects made by our sound effects artist, Chinchilla Sound. And yeah, we've got a lot of different assets. Those are matcap materials, which I'm going to be showing you also how you can make your own because we are providing you also a tool to create your own matcap materials for that. So along with this asset, you'll be able to download this Blender tool that's available in our Discord server under the Tools tab. So what is this? This is just a sphere, nothing else. Well, you need to go into this viewport shading mode. This is Blender, by the way, if you don't know this software, it's just free. You can download it on Steam or on Blender's website. And as you can see now, this is like a slime sphere. You can rotate around and see like, there are some artifacts while you're rotating, but like once you let go of the mouse, those are fixed. So let's say you've got this sphere here, right? Like so. And you want to port this into Unity or into Unreal as a matcap. So you're gonna be using this texture for your slime. Well, it's as easy as taking a screenshot of this. This doesn't need to be like exported in any specific format. It just needs to be like squared, right? Like a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. And you take a screenshot of this and just like so, you can see this is a square image. If I try to crop this, you can set this to square one-to-one -one aspect ratio. And this will work perfectly inside of Unity. I'm giving this one away, all right? So that's not an issue, all right? But yeah, we've got uh, like, I think like 16 different matcaps. I adjusted the material a bit. You can come into the Blender tool and on the shading uh, viewport, which should be here, uh, you can adjust like parameters here and there. I'm not going to reveal all the whole set of nodes, but like you can adjust uh, the looks of it by tweaking this around. You can see like a you can bring more of those dots there. You can make them darker. Uh, you can adjust the tiling. You can adjust the shapes, the colors, like everything. It's pretty, you know, it's simple, but it's effective. And it doesn't need to be too detailed. At the end of the day, this is just going to be used as a matcap, like as a reflection to give color to the slime. And the, the, the whole look of the slime would be mostly made by, you know, how much it deforms or how it animates and all that other stuff. The texture itself is not that important. And then inside of Unity, you can access the slime material that you want to adjust. And then inside the matcap feature here, you can switch the texture and you would be good to go in that sense. So yeah, as you can see, you've got like the reflections there that we were seeing on the Blender tool, like those specular dots there. And also like the small uh, little green bluish dots going on. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's like, used as a um, matcap reflection. So it's gonna follow the texture around, like the deformation around, and it gives that level of detail, like something is going on inside this slime, but it's not too complex or too noisy, which is great. It reads out great from all distances. So yeah, super easy to use. You're ready to go. And yeah, a lot of uh, lit shaders mostly because slimes should be lit, right? They are not just a pure being of light, but even then. And yeah, some other demo assets and whatnot. So let's import this. 
just in real time so you can see how everything works. Uh, let's check the scene, then we can go to PFX, sign VFX, demo, scenes, and the overview demo. So you can navigate throughout the demo scene, you can see like the different uh, features that we have uh, in that sense. And yeah, we've also got everything here in the uh, hierarchy view. <laughs> So, slimes, spheres, cubes, torus, characters, grid, slime warps, projectiles, skin mesh, bursts, areas, slime blend. Slime blend, let's start with this one maybe. So, this is just lurping between uh, your own material and the slime material. Essentially, if you come to the material, you'll see there are a lot of parameters here that you can tweak, uh, but you can adjust, for example, the offset of the slime, where the slime is appearing, the transparency, the fall off, like it's super nice to have this. Um, so let's say some slime is dripping on top of the surface. So you would be seeing like this progression. You can animate it technically using scripts or maybe you could also use like a timeline, for example. If you set the smoothness to be like close to zero, you'll see what happens there. It's like super cut off, right? But if you set it to maybe one, it's a smoother transition. So yeah, I just like setting that to one and then the erosion erodes, <laughs> but I wouldn't touch that. I would just leave that at zero and then just adjust the offset and that should be good to go. Also, you can see that this one is using another uh, feature, which is like the world or vertex. So this one is using vertex and you can adjust also the smoothness and the offset and everything. So yeah, if you rotate this, you'll see that the slime also rotates, right? But the other one won't. Let me just show you. You can see like the slime is pretty cool, right? <laughs> and then if I rotate this one, you'll see that the slime is always on top. So yeah, it's pretty cool. This is just another shape for the blend example. But yeah, essentially it will work on any shapes you put this on top of. Then for the areas, so those are just a couple bubbles around a specific area, just in case you might want to add this to, I don't know, like a slime sewer of sorts, maybe a slime river, slime, uh, I don't know, chamber, you name it, right? That's up to your imagination. So you can just grab this maybe and then crank that up to be like, 300. So, so you've got a lot of slimes going on. Um, I wouldn't do that, but you know, there's that. So the leaks are just dripping uh, slimes that fall to the floor and collide and leave bottles here and there, like not all the time, but like, yeah, from time to time, they're going to leave a burst of puddles in the ground, which is great. And this is like the burst. So it kind of pukes slime in that sense and has uh, some lingering particles on the floor also. It's pretty cool. And yeah, you can make it so you hit the slime beast or creature or whatever, and then just leave that as like a hit effects, for example, or maybe an attack, like the uh, slime spitting some slime on top of your character. And then here are some, a couple pools. Uh, like this one is transparent. It's like, yeah, like goo slime, pretty cool. This one is opaque. And you can see like, yeah, you can see the character through that. Super easy to understand. Everything is separated in their own like categories and everything. So maybe if you crank up the emission, it's going to be like radioactive or something. If you set this to zero, it's just going to be lit and reflecting the environment and without any emission. I always like to add a bit of emission, but just because like it gives that uh, more sci-fi look. Um, but yeah, those are also the slime orbs and everything. Then we've got the characters. And so this is a rainbowy character that's got uh, the hue animated. The hue shift speed is animated just a bit. If I set this up to be higher, you can see like the effect a bit better. So it's something like out of Mario Kart. I don't know. Then we've got like um, kind of like honey <laughs> animated material. You can go crazy with like materials and colors and maybe not make it look like a slime, but more like jelly uh, or honey or, you know, any other material that's gooey. I'm not going to mention any other materials just in case, uh, <laughs> but, but I really like this one. This one doesn't have like any uh, offset to like vertices. So it's just aesthetic, but it's got the slime look. So looks pretty nicely and can be combined with other materials, obviously on your character. So yeah, just feel free to test your materials out. They work also on top of animations, skeletal animations on rigged uh, characters, skinned meshes, you name it they will work. Here are a bunch of different slimes 
that rotate randomly, play this little animation. And if I select this one and move it around, you see that even though the material, uh, the formations and everything are being driven by world space, uh, this doesn't get buggy or like artifacts from moving this around. So it's pretty cool in that sense. You, you can have your uh, character like jumping around or doing whatever, attacking or you name it. And it should work perfectly and seamlessly with the material. Uh, I would open the material, but that doesn't make any sense because <laughs> I mean, somebody could just straight away steal it. So <laughs> yeah, but at least you can see like the parameters and what they're doing you can adjust the hue as you can see while i'm adjusting this slime here the other ones update because they share the same material um, but you can see like the for now color is green but why is it that this is this red color well that's just because the hue shift is being applied but if you set the hue shift to zero and then change the for now color to red you can have like this watermelon color combination kind of weird like red on the edges yeah, I mean, and then you can change the matcap color, even if this matcap is just green, because like, you know, slimes are green, but like you can desaturate that. So now it's this pure white or grayscale matcap, and then you can tint it to your own liking. So it would be this, maybe this red or a bit more orangey. So yeah, it's definitely up to you and what you want to do with that. Uh, but it's super easy to customize, as you can see. Uh, no issues at all, works seamlessly. And you can just let your imagination fly free. Keep an eye out for new features for this pack specifically, because we're going to be adding stuff like slimes exploding, not just bursting out particles. We are also going to be adding uh, slimes splattering on surfaces like the floor, the walls, like it was some kind of paint that can stick to surfaces, which is going to be great, inspired by Portal 2 uh, gels. Uh, that was suggested by a user in our Discord server, in which you're more than welcome to join. Here's the link, okay, and it's also on the pinned comment. So yeah, uh, feel free to join. We are starting to build like a small team of like a community of BFX game dev artists and leaving suggestions and adding, you know, value to the stuff we've been making over the past uh, months. So super glad to have you on board also if you want to join. And yeah, that's mostly the overview of the pack. But if you've got any other questions, feel free to reach out to us on Discord or at info at As always, enjoy and let's create some awesome slimy effects.